Okay, I cannot sit without hunching. Apparently, it's a thing that I do. This living room looks whatever. This is not my actual living room. This is my grandparents' house where I will move or not eventually. We'll see about that. So, you see this look vintage looking. It is vintage indeed. So it's been a week of reflection and uh, getting really... allow myself to get into my thoughts and uh, try and make some sense out of nonsense. And I felt like I wanted to sit down in here and film and not not even talk about myself as is, sorry, it's just, this is bothering my neck, anyway. Not even talking about myself and uh, just my own perspective, but I wanted to talk in general. But at the same time, you can never talk in general without passing it through the filter of your own perspective, because however much neutral you want to be you always speak through your emotions your brain your feelings and your perspective but this week i've been thinking um so i don't want to talk about me as i said but i want to talk about well the experiences i've had in life some positive ones some negative ones and so it just, I just, this was, it's Saturday once again. Well, I believe it was Sunday last week. Anyway, I lost track of time, honestly. But I was thinking to myself, I, I didn't even, I couldn't take a nap, but I was trying to relax and this thought popped into my mind. And I felt like I had to come here and uh, hit the record button and see if it helps someone. And I thought to myself, wow, when someone treats badly someone else, 99.9% 9 of the time, that person must be going through hell inside because one needs to have a lot of anger and resent an anguish within to go ahead and treat badly some other human being or living creature for that matter because you cannot create from an empty space and if there is no hurt within you you cannot um, project hurt onto another person, right? This all came from a quote that I had on my backboard a long time ago. And it reads, there cannot be no enemy outside if there is no enemy within. And so when someone onto a one-to-one -one kind of situation type deal or even to a world scale entire global population the majority of time when someone hurts someone else whoa that person must be in a turmoil inside to have to grab the courage, strength, and at the same time not being able to acknowledge the weakness that lies within, deal with it, work with your feelings, pass them through the filters up until you just filter out all the gunk and you're left with the good stuff in the sifter. 
but not, I realize that not everyone goes, is cut by the same cookie cutter kind of thing and that unfortunately there's more people than I would like to say that they don't know about the system and that is called dealing with your own emotions in a healthy way and so if they're happy they want you to be happy if they are frustrated they want to feel frustrate you to feel frustrated as well if they are hurting they want you to hurt even more it's something that you cannot even be angry about because the majority of time people that ask, act this way I think they don't do it in a conscious way otherwise they wouldn't do it there are some evil people in this world but the majority of time it's just people that they don't know how to deal with their own feelings and so they project them onto you and so if you have matured emotionally, if you if you have emotionally matured enough, when something really creates turmoil within you, a thunderstorm, a hurricane of feelings, if you have matured feelings and you have been taught through life how to deal with them, you're going to be able to pinpoint the origin of your discomfort and so from there you're going to work because trust me i think no one likes to be feeling bad so we all like feeling good and so we do you and you don't feel good if you only have the means the tools the know how to deal with the emotions I feel we could truly avoid a lot of pain and anguish that's been given freely around the world and it's going completely unasked for And so, as you probably saw in the last video recently, call it as you will, call it as you will. It's not just about that situation, but I was thinking a lot about my situation, because it's the one that I am currently experiencing. And after the first wave of denial, anger, I thought to myself, my oh my, you must be having a hard time and you must be hurting. To be hurting someone else that you love so badly, like to the point that I would always, I, I, to the point that I would almost want to pick up my phone and I did and I'm not Mother Teresa but and I just made a question one simple question that I didn't receive but I felt that you don't lose anything for being you and that's not making you less of a human being. And so I typed, are you okay? That conversation could have just ended there or we could have gone back and forth before this question after seven days. Uh, could have just stopped, blocked, erased, that's it. Or we could have gone into this bickering, ugly, fighting, name calling, unnecessary, disgrace of communication but instead I heard nothing 
but I typed, are you okay? Because I thought that that person, to act the way he did, he really must have been hurting inside. And that maybe that person doesn't know how to deal with his feelings. Like, I take myself as an example. I remember, I remember my life, right? And uh, when I was in my teenage years, I was angry. I was mad at the world. Yes, I can tell you, I've been bullied. Things weren't going my way. I could explain you all of this. And I was very angry and I was anxious and I even felt depressed. But it took me several years to understand that the first person that I needed the approval of and the first person that I needed the love of and the first person that I needed to take care of and the first person that I needed to rely on was on me all on me and the moment as naive as it sounds that it dawned on me that it was me, my job and my responsibility completely to just love myself the way I am and sure someone can come and disrespect you, insult you, or break up with you, and that's gonna hurt your feelings. But what you do with those feelings, it's fully your responsibility. All the time. Every single time. If someone comes right, right now, if I step into my, if I step onto my balcony right now and someone passing through the street, tells me I'm a whore. Does that make me a whore? It took me several years to come to terms to accept what I wanted to accept and to discern the good from the bad and you can call me as you will. It is your right to do so you really must be hurting if you have to go and hurt someone else. I am sorry that you're hurting. Now, I'm not a doormat, so I'm not going to take your hurt. I'm going to stop it in there. But from, but from there, within, it all relies on me. Say you called me stupid, just to not say horrible, horrible names. It is my job to accept of not or not that description of you. Do I consider myself stupid? Do I consider your opinion superior to my perception of myself? This kind of stuff. And so if someone, yeah, passes across the street and tells me stupid, I might be some other things. I might be a daydreamer and I would almost clap back. I, I'm all, I would almost say, hey, you got that right. You got me stupid. I'm sorry that you're hurting so much that you have to call me stupid. You must be having a terrible day within yourself. And uh, thank you for your offering, but I won't take it. This toxicity within me. And uh, this is a nutshell because I could ramble on and on for a long, but I was, I really felt the urge to sit down here and, and film and it's not rocket science and it's not my discovery, all that I'm saying, but I thought, yeah, we sometimes, we all need to be remembered of that. that if someone, for instance, says you, they don't love you no more, that doesn't mean that you're not deserving of love. 
sometimes they might mean it and some other times they might just be hurting so badly that the only way they know how to deal with their emotions is to hurt someone back. Someone might be having a bad day at the office and they, they come home and so they argue with you because their boss yelled at them. This is something that for numerous reasons I learned to discern back when I was 17, maximum 19. Like if I had a bad day in this, it's not a bad day in here. If someone had a misunderstanding with me, that doesn't tr transcend onto the other people. And so this week, just to go not so general and go more specific, my nephew was happy, bubbly and whatnot. And I wasn't feeling my best because of what I told you last week. But that's not his fault. But I don't want to be lying to people. I want them just to understand and be respectful. And I think respect and understanding and empathy and resilience are the values that we need more in this planet. And so my nephew approached me across a week and he would tell, come and tell me his fun things, stories, whatnot, him dressed as Spider-Man. And it came to a point because I remember when I was a little one, there was no explanation or completely yelling at my household. And I didn't understand that. And I know there was trouble within my parents. And so uh, what I did with my nephew, who spends a lot of time with me, this week was the first time that we, he and I were on our own because I know that some people might not understand this and so I told him so I'm not feeling my best today I never treat children like they're stupid they're just children and so I think he can understand what he can understand and he doesn't need to know what he doesn't need to know and so I told him that my boyfriend I won't say the name here but that my boyfriend decided that he didn't want to be friends with me anymore. He's seven. He doesn't need to know all the details. And he responded, he, that little man, he just sat by my bed and he went like so. Because just the day previous to that, we had a FaceTime call, the three of us. And he was like, well, I don't understand that. Why? Why did he tell you that he did that? And I told him, he didn't give me no explanation. He was like, well, that's weird. Maybe he doesn't mean it. And I told him, well, I think he means it. And then he went into thinking, he's, he's gonna be, if it doesn't get ruined, he's gonna be such a great human adult. And he told me, I don't know, when I fight with my friends at school and tell me they don't want to be friends with me no more, we talk it up and we're friends the next day. And if they don't want to talk to me, I tell them, it's on you, not on me. A seven-year-old. And I thought, you're so right. And so we ended the conversation very simple, very simply. I mean, a somehow selfish way, but I think he could provide that to me. And I told him, well, I know that you don't like that very much, but today I could really use a hug. And so he gave me this big hug. And I told him, just a little bit tighter. And I told him, you're such a strong little one. And that's it. You know, because my, with, within my family, we don't talk about feelings. 
We don't give hugs. They, I do, but they don't. It's the way they were raised. And so I really needed to talk that through with someone that would make some sense. And what do you know? The little one made the best sense out of all of them. And that's it. That's what's been up with me this week. And I hope wherever you are, things are good. And if things get a little bit iffy, don't let it be on you. Just go through the sifter and uh, separate good from bad. Deal with the other emotions, the positive, constructive way. And if someone ever dares to hurt you, don't hurt back. Just let them know that you're sorry that they're hurting so much, they didn't need to go and project that into someone else. So I'll leave you with that, and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.